Montana, Big Sky Country, God's Country. Lewis and Clark navigated their way through Montana in 1804, crossing two mighty rivers, the Missouri and the Yellowstone. The contrast between the high mountain ranges and vast sweeps of golden grain fields make Montana one of the most powerful geographies we have in North America. In the state, agriculture is king, with over 27,000 farms and ranches on 58 million acres producing food to feed Montana, America, and the world. Today, Ready visits one of the more well-known farms in the state, Fast Ag. We appreciate Tony Fast for choosing Ready to upgrade his air seeder, and we're happy to provide reliable and innovative egg services. We are just rolling into the town pump truck stop here in Glendive, Montana. We're actually meeting our guys here. They're coming from Fargo. Logan and I just came from two farm shows last week and we knocked those out, the Bismarck one and then the Billings. And we're, I'm jumping out, gonna join the Tony Fast group. And there they are, looks like they're ready to go. Fancy seeing you guys here. Nice rig. You even got her clean before you came. <laughs> I'll volunteer the middle. There's Madison NG. We're here. Hey. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Well, we're getting close. I hope. Because we're a little squished in here. <laughs> yeah. And my butt hurts. <laughs> we got our lovely pilot, Garrett here. Co-pilot, Brett. Got Justin here. And yours truly, Matt. I'm not going to do much. Madison, he's going to be behind the camera a lot, doing some podcasts. Yep. You're gonna to wanna to check out those podcasts with Tony Fast and we might even get someone else on there. You'll have to see it, you'll be surprised. Check out this, this space is amazing. Who knew? How'd you get it past this center post, Tony? Check out check out the YouTube channel, not ours, his, <laughs> to see how they got it in here. We when we built hoppers, we made that like it's on a barn track so we can pull it out of the way. Okay. Open both doors on pin if you slide it out of the way. And you're gonna use it for what kind of conditions? Because you normally have a for go for our hole drill. Like smaller fields and hills where okay. we don't want to take the big drill. So you get to test how good is a disc drill versus... Yeah, and a seven and a half inch disc drill versus 12 inch hole drill. This is true. So this will be different. It won't be apples for apples, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see it on your channel, I'm sure. Tony wanted to do a rebuild, but he kind of wanted to see how the drill did before he put a ton of money in it. So we're gonna take care of some of the more pressing things. For example, the main pin up front, so the whole row unit doesn't slop too much side to side. The discs are pretty small. We're gonna change those. A couple other things. You'll notice the depth adjusters are sloppy in some spots. Oh, that one's missing. <laughs> that one doesn't have any depth control. This slop right here. We're gonna take care of that by drilling out this link with a bigger hole. Replace the hardware and put a bigger hardened bushing in there. So we'll get all the depth hopefully up to snuff here. But the closing wheels right now, are gonna probably stay the way they are, even though they're a little slide to side sloppy. But uh, we're gonna see how it goes, see how he likes them. Obviously there's some wheels that he's gonna have to attend to. Common problems we see, but he'll be able to get by for a year and see how it does, see how he likes it. All right, watch this. Bam! Tony Jr. <laughs> All right, another guy we got joining our team is Peyton. He's a seasoned air seeder mechanic. You already met Brett, also a seasoned air seeder mechanic. Very talented. How many red machines do you think you've done before? A good few. Less than green, but quite a few. More than 10? Oh, yeah. More than 10. <laughs> what? Ooh, throwing the smack down early. Red versus green. Get on the comments below and let's vote. What machine wears all faster, the green ones or the red ones? It's great to work with Tony, great family. 
um, become good friends over the years and uh, we're happy to help him with this cedar and we take the uh, guesswork that wondering what to do out of this whole thing and we get it all up to snuff for him just like we can do for you. Garrett's our rebuild lead here. How are you gonna attack this thing? Just go through and start taking gauge wheels and discs off, pulling all of the depth adjusters off. Pull the hose off and the down pressure springs off and start cutting A bolts to yeah. remove rows from the drill. Why do you cut the A bolts off? Because it's a lot easier than unbolting them. Yes, easier and we found that these A bolts stretch and you can sometimes strip the threads on them when you're zipping the nuts on and off. And we just don't like those calls where we have to come warranty a row unit falling off in the field and we're getting run over because the A-bolts didn't hold up after we put them back on. So we actually source all new A-bolts, we call them, and put put it all on fresh. It's a lot faster and it's kind of cheap insurance too. What do you guys think of this work so far? I'm going to get my lawn chair and watch, I think. I think that's a great idea. Do you think they'll be annoyed if we drink coffee and... I've been in the office ordering parts. I don't know what you guys have been oh. doing. <laughs> We're just planning I'm our a next step already. <laughs> so I think that's from the seven gallons of coffee you've already drank today, probably. No. The headaches from. Here's a common thing we see where the weld breaks on this flag and that's because it's seizing up in here and it's uh, starting to spin this. Here's one that's already been welded. Most of these they break the bolt off first and there's a nice little gap. That's where all your slop is. So having a bolt break off is not uncommon on these red machines. And unfortunately we got to deal with this one. Yeah, they're kind of a pain. Now we can get it out of this wheel pretty good. The problem is getting it out of the depth adjuster. Oh, oh, it moves. It moves now. I gotta heat it up again. More heat. More heat. More frustration. <clears throat> I'm done asking. Someone said they had luck with getting. Day two, 6 a.m. Let's go. This is what happens when your parts aren't made to spec. We get to modify them in the field. Not always the most fun, but we got to do it to make sure it works. And uh, thankfully, Tony's helping us out by welding them up. I'm cleaning them and painting them, and then the guys are hanging them.
very happy to have hamburgers, fresh burgers. This is a nice treat. Thanks to the Fast family for making us food for lunch. Tony here, show us how to install the sensors. Have you done this before? Yeah, I think this is our fifth drill. All so right. Install intelligent air guns. So you, you're probably qualified to do this then. Yeah, probably. All right. Two of them were in season. Then we gave up on the other guys. Oh. In season. You just had to have something more. better. Yeah. Yep. In the box, you're going to see the mounts and the hardware, an ECU and some brackets. Now what we're doing is we're mounting these U-bolts. Minor and Much easier. much guys for watching this adventure we've had here at Tony Fast. Thanks Tony for having us again. Yeah. Tony had to work for it today. We had him doing some stuff proving he still got the touch. And these guys did great. Cheer for them. Applause. Oh, clap. Yep. <laughs> well, these guys are gonna pull in another cedar. Can you believe it? We got another cedar coming in here. You're gonna want to check out the next video and see that. And it might not be a red one. Spoiler alert. Is Tony getting a different color machine? Could it be a green one? Stay tuned for the bonus material right after this, how we get this thing out of here. All right guys, God bless, see you next time.